In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions, the upcoming crazy pattern we're going to be in, and then also multiple days of upcoming severe weather. Let's get straight into this video, though. And first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery. And as you can see, there is plenty going on here. We have lots of thunderstorms down here in the deep south that have really just broken out. We can see lots of severe thunderstorm warnings over the past six hours, which has basically been since 12 a.m. last night, actually after 1 a.m. So it's been a stormy night down there in the deep south. We also have these showers. I mean, for a huge portion of the country here that you can see snowfall in a lot of these Rockies and Cascade regions, uh, and then kind of rainfall horseshoeing around those areas. Uh, we also have some showers making their way uh, up into the mid-Atlantic and portions of the southeast here, but these are not in the form of thunderstorms, although this area is going to have a chance of thunderstorms over the coming days, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, what we're actually going to do here is move on and just zoom into the south or northwestern United States here. Again, snowfall here in the Cascades still, uh, also for the northern Rockies here, so throughout all of these regions there's snowfall happening. Uh, but we have rainfall here, rainfall in here, uh, and then rainfall, obviously, as you head eastward of those Rockies. Um, so it, it is kind of just like a layered, I'm, I, it's always how it is. I mean, it really is. Like, we have the lower elevation areas, then the high elevation, then low again, then high again, then low, finally, in the east. But it, it just makes for a complicated uh, weather situation, let me put it that way. Uh, these are quite isolated heading on to the northwestern coast here. Uh, but I will say that uh, there is some heavier pockets in there. We see those yellows popping up in there. Uh, so these could be in the form of a more minor thunderstorm, I would say, uh, as they reach the coast. So be on the lookout for that. I know over the past few days, we have had general thunderstorm risks for this area. So I would be surprised if some of these are a little bit heavier and, and are associated with a little bit of thunder potentially uh, at times. As we get warmer and, and just towards that time of year, it's going to become more and more possible for that region. Now, as we move a little bit further eastward, we can really see this snowfall in here all the way down to Colorado and then back up. So Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and then Colorado. I mean, all of like the rocky states. I mean, it's not too surprising here. I have no idea what this is. You might say, well, you definitely see this on your screen. There's words that keep popping up, but it's been really annoying me for a few days and I can't find in the settings where to turn it off. So please forgive me for that. Um, but I've seen other YouTubers struggle with this. I've, I've noticed that there's no settings to turn it off, and I think it's just something to do with the update in the program that happened recently, but it always pops up, and there's I don't know how to get rid of it. So if anybody knows how to get rid of it, let me know, please. We do have some heavier showers moving up kind of like this through Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, North Dakota as well, and then eastern Montana. Uh, mostly rain showers. We are seeing some of those snowfall showers here for the northern portions of Minnesota trying to pop up. Uh, and there is some heavier pockets, especially in this region. Here, as you can see, yellows and even blues in the snow there. So definitely some heavier precipitation taking place there in northern Minnesota. That's definitely worth noting, in my opinion. Now, we're going to move down to these thunderstorms here because these have been very intense here. Especially over here, there was probably intense wind with this area here. There's a strong bow echo there. You see how it almost takes on this shape. Watch it. Watch it just take that shape. Yeah, right there. That is intense winds probably associated with that. And I'm not surprised there's been severe thunderstorm warnings along that for quite a while. Um, went through Shaveport, uh, Jackson. It kind of headed, headed through to some of those areas in northern Louisiana and central Mississippi. Let us know in the comments down below if you experienced these thunderstorms because they were pretty potent in my opinion, it looks like. Then these thunderstorms out ahead of all this, we see these building in, uh, heading in like this direction. You see that? out ahead of that bow echo. These were probably also quite intense, that moisture coming off of the Gulf and heading up here. These were probably in the form of supercells, it looks like, and I'm surprised there was no tornado reports that I can see, uh, just because these types of storms usually are associated with tornadoes, uh, but it looks like we didn't really get any, which is a very, very good thing so far. Um, so hopefully things kind of continue that way. But those have been quite intense as well. So yes, very intense thunderstorms happening down here, severe thunderstorms. Let's move up northward. We have these showers moving across, kind of like this. Um, and these are impacting these areas with light to moderate rainfall. There is some moderate areas in there for sure in the yellows, as you can see. One pocket there and then one pocket that's been going on there. 
Um, and this could lead towards some heavier rainfall at times, but thankfully no major impacts expected with this. And then basically just offshore of the Carolinas here, uh, we do have these showers and thunderstorms going on, but they've stayed offshore for the most part. Um, so we'll have to see if these hit the outer banks or if they actually like go more out to sea. I feel like I'm forecasting a tropical storm here. Uh, we're getting towards that time of year, um, but here, here's the overall look. This is what we're dealing with, and we're going to move on and talk about the upcoming pattern now. Now here we are taking a look at the overall pattern. We can see this storminess move down through here. We can see the showers up here, very cold showers moving into the northwestern United States. And you see this storm, it just eventually moves up into here for uh, overnight tonight into Wednesday. So we expect some potential rainfall and thunderstorms in here throughout the day today. Um, it just depends. Like I think the northern regions probably have a little bit of a less chance of thunderstorms, and these areas have a little bit more chance of thunderstorms. So it just depends. But the low is right over the Chesapeake Bay here, so all those surrounding regions are getting impacted by this. But we have our secondary low, which is really gonna this this cold front is gonna swing down and it's gonna impact these same regions uh, as we head into Wednesday. So watch this. Really quickly, we see that build in for these regions, and then we get more severe weather in the sea southeast. And this is the one I've been saying probably going to feel like that storm didn't even move offshore. If we didn't have weather maps and this was 200 years ago, uh, it probably you know nobody would be able to tell that it's a separate storm. I guess maybe people that understand uh, barometric pressure would maybe be able to see that it went down and then back up. I don't know, but uh, it's just very interesting that it's one of those situations where the fact that we have weather maps really is the only way that we're able to even tell what's going on. Then Thursday, we're going to have a bit of a, a frontal boundary here hitting the East Coast. So expect potential thunderstorms up and down the East Coast on Thursday, Thursday, April 7th. That's really what I'm going to be watching for. And then by this point, look at the jet stream, guys. Absolutely madness here. Huge trough. Lots of cold air pouring in. Really big warm-up out west for the time being. Warm air is probably racing up the East Coast, but it's going to be pushed out very, very shortly. Uh, that's a super cool pattern we're in. Uh, and then look at that. It really centers itself over the east by the time we're reaching Friday. And uh, I think the weekend you can expect to be very, very cold. Uh, we're going to have a warm week, obviously, this week along the eastern United States. But in here, I mean, it's going to be frigid uh, Friday through Sunday, I think. So be on the lookout for that. All these areas in here, cold weekend up ahead. Also, for these regions, as we reach into Saturday and Sunday, it's going to get cooled down. And really, the only warm regions will be in here. Uh, and up in here as well. But as we reach towards Sunday, Monday, look at how things flip. Uh, this trough moves in, which causes the ridge to move further eastward, which causes this trough to move further eastward, and everything progresses like that. So that trough moves in through the northwest, and it, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of like that saying, like, there's only enough room for one of us. And I, I don't know, uh, what's the old, like, Wild Wild West term, like, um, there ain't enough room for the both of us or whatever. It's kind of like that with the trough. Um, you know, we can't have two troughs in the United States. Uh, really, the cold air recycles and heads back towards uh, the west here. Uh, and then the ridge is forced to move eastward. Uh, there's not enough room for both. So that's why it forces everything out eastward. Um, it just puts pressure on the whole thing uh, and really just forces it out. I don't know how else to put it. So it's it moves in like this, and look at that, what ends up developing by about the 13th. Um, 982 millibar low pressure center here. Just an absolute, I mean, there's only one way to put this, and it is probably a blizzard. I mean, for this region, with that strong of a low pressure center for the Rockies and the Northern Plains, we're going to have to watch for that very, very closely because that is looking absolutely wild. It's a 978 millibar low pressure center by that point, and then we get a massive cold front in here bringing likely severe weather from southern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, all the way down through Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana. I wouldn't be surprised if we have severe weather happening up and down the central United States like that with how strong that storm is. And look at how it moves into the um, more of the Ohio Valley and deep south. Again, all of these regions could be dealing with severe weather. I wouldn't even be surprised if there's some severe weather happening in Canada on this type of a frame, uh, potentially all the way up into there. Um, so that, that could be what you're looking for here on this date. And then it moves towards the Eastern United States, but this is actually a really concerning look. Uh, I want to play this back and I want to turn the convective available potential energy on because this is kind of new. Um, this wasn't on the model run, uh, a while ago. Let's see. 
Yeah, so you see this is our thunderstorm fuel. Look at all on this date. This is going to be Tuesday into Wednesday, 12th into 13th of April. Take it with a grain of salt, it's quite far out, but we have plenty of this potential energy, convective available potential energy, for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Could you imagine if we actually had severe weather in all those states? I mean, think of the impacts. Now, as we head towards the day on Wednesday, like I said, look at this. Up into Canada, we have some of that. Um, looks like 500 Cape or a little bit more, which would be sufficient for some thunderstorms and severe weather up all the way into Canada. Uh, and then I want to see at the very end of the model run, yeah, so the eastern United States in here would have some thunderstorm potential as well, all the way up in New England. So this could be one of our furthest north um, thunderstorm events or severe weather events that we've had, uh, and by far the most widespread if, if this happens right here, because that is absolutely wild, and that would impact so many different folks. I mean, I can't even imagine, but uh, that could be our next severe weather outbreak, really. Um, the 10th through the 15th. I mean, it looks like a lot of thunderstorm activity coming up during that time frame. We're only five days away from the 10th, so that would be upcoming fairly soon after this event we're talking about right now. Let's move on and talk about those temperature anomalies, though, and see what the temperature pattern is going to look like. So here we are taking a look at the temperature pattern. Let's just continue on with this. Um, we're, we're kind of in a warm pattern in the east here for the week, like I said. Cold here, basically, is what we're looking at. But as time moves on Thursday... Uh, we start to see the cold air move towards the central United States. This is when it looks like about like this, just like that. And then we see as we move on towards Friday, that centers itself more over the eastern United States. So we're seeing it move in like this, cold air really pouring in now to the central and eastern United States. And then it's really centered over here for the entire weekend. Like I mentioned, the weekend is going to be really, really cold. It's not going to be pleasant. Uh, so Friday through Saturday for the eastern folks. And then we see this one establishing itself up here in the Northwest. And this is the one that's eventually going to force this one out. Uh, and this one's going to establish itself over the West. And then the warm up is going to move towards where this trough is. Uh, so we'll see that take place here. Happens pretty slowly, but surely. But we see this trough really becomes the primary one, obviously. We, we have just tons of cold air here for the West. And then tons of warmth here for the Central and Eastern United States. I mean, tons of warmth really, really warm pattern we find ourselves in for middle April. We've been talking about this actually for a few days now, if you've been keeping up with our videos. Um, and then I, it's kind of a question mark what's happening here by this point, but it looks like somewhat of a cold front is making its way into the eastern United States by about Thursday or Friday, the 14th through the 15th. So that is the look. Uh, warm week this week, cold weekend, and then another warm week after it. And then it's a bit of a question mark after that, but that is the upcoming pattern. Let's take a look at the storm prediction center real quick. We're actually taking a look at this on the actual SPC website because Pivotal Weather was acting up this morning, so I had to switch this over to this. But today, like I mentioned, actually, I didn't see this before, but we do have a general thunderstorm risk up there in the northwest. So, yeah, don't be surprised if you hear some thunder up here, Seattle, Spokane, any of those areas. Uh, but we also see for the southeast, obviously, there's a big general thunderstorm risk in here, which is general thunderstorms are expected within that lighter green region. That's It's as simple as that. We have a marginal risk up here for Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas as well, uh, Illinois. And then we have a huge marginal risk here for the Cal or the Californias. I swear, I have to mess up one name every single video. I can't go a video without messing up a name. The, the Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina there, uh, and all the way through the Deep South and the Southeast. We also have a slight risk there for a lot of the Southeast states in the yellow. That's where um, a little bit more scattered severe weather is going to be possible. And then our orange region there for Missouri... Oh, there I go again. Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina there. And that's where a little bit more of widespread severe weather is going to be possible. Let's take a look at those individual outlooks. Wind here. We have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location here within the two brown regions. A 15% chance there in the yellow. A 30% chance there in the red. And then a 45% chance there within the purplish region there for uh, Alabama and Georgia. So be on the lookout for that. That is very high probabilities of damaging wind. Super concerning, obviously. Hail, we only have a 5% chance within the two brown regions within 25 miles of a given location. And then there in the yellow, we have a 15% chance. Tornadoes, uh, we do have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the two green regions. A 5% chance there in the brown. And then a 10% chance there in the yellow region. Uh, that's pretty high for tornadoes and then we have the hatched area there where we can see where it's dashed a little bit that's indicating that 
uh, major tornadoes are going to be possible. EF5, or better yet, EF2s to EF5s uh, within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, we're going to have to be really watching for potential uh, major tornadoes. Uh, it's just one of those days where it will be possible. Let's move on to day two. So that's for the day today. Uh, day two is going to be for two, uh, Wednesday. It's going to be April 6th here. You can see we have a very similar area here. But again, it's from a separate storm. So this is not the same storm. We have a second storm that moves in uh, for tomorrow. And as you can see, uh, we have a very large region over there. We have a general thunderstorm risk here for Mississippi, Wisconsin, and uh, a little bit of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan as well. Um, let's see. Then for the southeast and a lot of the mid-Atlantic here, we have a general thunderstorm risk here. This is a very large region again. We have a marginal risk in the darker green. Again, isolated severe weather is possible in there. The yellow area there is where uh, scattered severe weather is going to be possible. And then this area here in northern Alabama and uh, northern Georgia, as well as portions of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee, is where widespread severe weather is going to be possible here on the day on Wednesday, April 6th. So let's take a look at those individual outlooks real quick. Wind, we expect a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there within the brown, a 15% chance there in the yellow, and then a 30% chance there in the red. Uh, hail here, we only have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location within all of the brown regions. Very typical for the eastern United States to have a lower hail chance than, let's say, the plains or something like that. It's just always how it is. It's way harder to get hail events out here uh, just due to the, the way things are, really, uh, with the ocean, uh, the Appalachian Mountains, all of it just doesn't doesn't enhance the chance for hail, really. Tornadoes, we have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green, and then a 5% chance there within the brown of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location. The good thing is we, have, we don't have a 10% chance here, and we don't have that hatched area, so let's really hope that stays that way. Day three here is going to be for uh, a lot of the eastern United States, like I mentioned, all the way up to Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, we have a general thunderstorm risk, and all the way back down to Florida, as you can see. Then we have a, the two marginal risk areas, which is almost like one, but it just goes out to sea here. So it's just like this. I'm assuming in the ocean here, there's also a marginal risk, and that's where isolated severe weather will be possible. And then right here for the coastal areas of North Carolina and Virginia, uh, we see that there's a slight risk of severe weather where scattered severe weather will be possible. The only other day I need to show you is day, that's going to be for Thursday, by the way, what I just showed you. The only other day we need to look at is the day, uh, I think this is day 7 outlook here. For Monday, April 11th, we have a 15% chance of severe weather that's popping up now. And this translates to at least a slight risk here for Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Uh, again, by the time we're reaching Monday, April 11th. So we're going to have to watch for that very, very closely. Um... Yeah, it's going to be day seven. So we, we have a day seven outlook now, and I think this is going to be kind of the beginning of the next event, but we'll have to wait and see about that. We'll obviously see as we get further and further into the forecast. For today's confidence tab, since we're really approaching this event, I've moved up to a five out of six. I just feel really confident at this point in uh, everything we're talking about now since we're so, so close, so our confidence is fairly high. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Band, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donnie Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Hartley, Michael Cotto, Lassa Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Calisi also. I would also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.